Um, you know, I honestly, I had been breeding small animals and parrots my whole life, basically. So I thought, you know, reptiles would be a lot easier than those things, or at least the parrots. So I was, I never, I guess, I guess you could call me overly confident, but I was never worried about not being able to breed them. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess my my premise in life is like, look, everything on Earth wants to breed. All we got to do is get out of the way to make it happen. So, right. It's. I mean, they're here. I mean, they're actually designed to breed here. Yes, yeah, so that's everybody's purpose, including our own. We just kind of right. have gotten out of that. <laughs> right. Now, I mean, that being said, and you know, I feel like the breeding part is easy, right? You know, and we could just talk about condors right now, but the the breeding part seems to be the easy thing getting eggs on the floor people can do but i feel like a lot of people come to a, a a stop or a discouraging moment when it comes to the feeding trials or establishment right so yeah what, what were some of the trial and errors you had in the beginning or what were some things that you're still trying to figure out now that you could kind of talk about um i still you know the eggs are still always the the uh the weak link, I guess, for even me up until this point. I mean, I could set eggs up identical, one clutch right next to another. Everything was the same with the adults. And one clutch hatches out all the babies, and the other clutch, there's a bunch of full-term dead babies. And I, you know, I really don't, uh, I'm really not sure why that is yet. I haven't been able to fully get rid of it. So, yeah. I, don't, I mean, obviously, I don't believe it's something that happens in nature. I don't, so I, there's clearly something we're doing that's not quite right, but I'm not uh, fully sure what that is. So uh, you're, you're confident that like fully developed snake neos aren't dying in the egg in the wild. Like if they're at, if they're at that point, I would, well, it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, that that's not a good species. If that was a big problem in the wild, they would just be extinct. So. I mean, cause I always. I always thought about it. I was like, okay, how are these ratios, you know, these, these, you know, establishment ratios so low here, if the wild, you would think it's a lot harder to get established in the wild. You know what I mean? And it, they just seem like they're so fragile, you know, but I, I don't yeah, feel but, like I mean, really there's are. a big difference. For one thing, they're not, they don't, they're not designed to eat pinky mice. That's probably the number one biggest thing that's wrong with trying to breed condors in captivity is they are they are designed to eat small skinks and if i've been to australia i've been to cape york and there's little skinks running around i mean there's millions of them just in the leaf litter all over that's the perfect meal for a baby condor so i don't uh i don't believe i think they i mean i think a lot of them probably get predated on they probably don't have a high recruitment rate um right. even the adults are not out of the food chain they're still, I mean, they're still a tiny python in comparison to most things. Right. And, uh, I mean, there's mammals that'll and birds probably that'll happily eat a adult green python if they find one. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. They're far from a pinnacle, you know, top tier predator in their yeah. environment. They're probably so they must have probably a decent recruitment, but I bet it's still not the greatest. Those little babies probably get eaten by frogs and lizards and monitors and birds and all kinds of stuff. So that being said, what is it that you do with your your neos? Like, what is it that you 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 know first offer them when it comes to your feeding trials and stuff? Um, I think well, probably one thing I do is I just don't I don't try really quick. Usually, once they hatch and shed, I usually wait like at least three weeks after they shed before I even bother to try to feed them. Um, and that's more just for my own mental sanity because they, you know, they are not always the easiest thing to get going. And so the longer I wait, I get a better percentage that start the first time. And so right. uh, it was just something I got in the habit of doing years ago. And, and I've had babies that eat like, you know, the second they shed or whatever, but I find that it's, I don't really think there's any benefit to getting them to eat that fast. Yeah. Cause you know, I've, I've, I've had a couple chondro breeders on here who, who like literally feed I mean, not, they all don't do it, but if they can, they try to get them to eat before their first shed. You know what I mean? And, and I'm like, that's, that's, that stresses me out personally. I'm like, fuck, like really? Like, I just like, ugh, like, 
because you already know like more likely they're not going to eat you know what i mean so like that's like already a negative trial right off the bat you know well i don't even know if it's i don't know i mean i guess a lot of this is just opinion based but i can't even imagine it's good for them they're basically when they first hatch they're just like this blob of guava jelly they're really not very (laughs) well developed and um you know they hatch with a yolk that's designed to sustain them you know through four months they can go if you don't feed a baby condor it could go six months without eating but the minute you feed it the first time the clock starts so it's, so, so let me ask you this i don't mean to cut you off but if if, if somebody like has a baby chondro and it's like it, it dies right and it's like oh well it didn't eat you know and it's on week four that's why it died you're saying it's not the food that killed it for sure it's something else uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, well, most of the time, I guess you can never fully know if they died of malnutrition, but snakes can go a long time without eating, and they've got a remarkable amount of ability to withstand not getting food. But that once they start, as a baby snake, once they start eating, though, then they got to keep eating. They yeah. don't, until they're adults, then they can better handle long term without food, but the babies and once the babies are eating you know 10 15 times they can they can go some time again but and 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 then if i if i remember correctly you don't spend too much energy on the whole assist force feed side of things right like if if no i'm pretty brutal huh i'm pretty brutal i'm kind of one of those either either get to live in or get to die i'm kind of a guy (laughs) (laughs) i mean you know it's we breed snakes for captivity and (laughs) <laughs> Unfortunately, they evolve to eat something we don't have readily available. And so it's not, I don't feel it's a good idea to work too hard to get a baby established that doesn't want to be established because they will pass that habit on to their, you know, offspring. Yeah, right. And, and then that's a, another thing too. Like if you're like super into this to hold stuff back, you don't want to hold something back like that theoretically you know what i mean no Um, well there's other problems the snake could have problems that you don't even congenital development problems you don't even know about and all you're doing is just prolonging its suffering you know you don't really know yeah you know and it's like it's, it's it's a shame too because like in the beginning you know like i didn't have too much i mean i still haven't you know who the fuck what the fuck am i saying but i've only had two chondro clutches the first one i've always talked about you know it, you know, it ate for me, ate, ate meals right off the bat. It was a tiny little fucker, but it ate right off the bat. And then it just, something happened. There was like a heat malfunction in my room when I was in surgery. So that one didn't make it. But then this one right here, like I wanted, I wanted it to go so bad where I wanted to just assist feed it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah. And, and, and my boy shot to mommy Socrates. He's fucking really awesome with chondros. He's, he's having a great year so far um, with his chondro clutches. And, you know, he, he took in that snake I was assist feeding and you need, he got it to strike and stuff, but this fucker a year later, bro, this guy's still not eating, bro. Like, you know, he looks, oh. looks good, you know, and he, you know, I bless my friend for fucking assist feeding him, but like, I, fuck dude, sick pet. Thanks. I, buddy. I can't do it. I just, I, for one, maybe I just have too many snakes, I guess, but I just, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of feel like. Then what do I do with that animal? If I sell it to somebody, I feel guilty that it's going to make crappy babies. And then, I don't know, just doesn't seem like a – it's yeah, it's rather yeah, unfortunate yeah. we can't just feed them what they want to eat because they would probably all eat and they would all do fine. But Because one of the biggest problems with raising those things is getting through that prolapse stage from feeding them pinkies. Because right. pinkies are just a horrible, horrible food. Um but unfortunately, it's basically what we got. So that's was what what I was gonna say is you know your 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 method is you know you wait that you wait those few that first few weeks after the shed, and then you offer a mouse pink or what do you offer? Uh yeah, you got to offer them pinks. So that's basically all they can eat. Uh, I try to get them onto peach fuzzies and stuff with hair as fast as I can, but right, you got you know you do have to be somewhat careful not to push them too hard. Do you rinse that pinky off at all, or do you could just do it straight up? Um, I usually do frozen thawed. I find they like frozen thawed better than live for some reason. Um, but it depends. Every animal's different. Some want a live one. Some want teased fed. I've never had one just eat a pinky left in the tub. Right. 
that's never happened for me. Um, <sighs> so I always end up tease feeding them and just going through the motions. So I gotta love your ball python sometimes. They'll do that for you. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching this week's Trap Talk with MJ podcast clip. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. That way you're on top of every single Trap Talk clip that's released here every week. And that way you're on top of every single podcast that comes out every Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday here on the Trap Talk with MJ YouTube channel, where we bring all the hottest up-and-coming reptile keepers and all the most experienced, hottest reptile keepers in the reptile game. We will see you here next week with another Trap Talk clip, and we're out. Cheap.